Once we started the foundation, it was really a way for us to to honor my brother and to carry his legacy that I felt like was cut so short. I'm here to celebrate one of the most memorable players I've ever coached, AJ Sly. I'm going to be biased when I say it, but my brother was going to do something good with his life. And there's just things that I definitely wish we could go through together. Um, but for me, I know um, I look at it from his side. I don't want anyone to ever feel like they have to go through that battle. I never want anyone to have to go through the situations that our family has to. So um, our goal is just to keep fighting for a cure. And if not find a cure, then at least provide a community around people that are going through hard situations. My family moved here um, in 2007. My dad's a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, so every single time we got stationed at a new base, um, it was me and AJ starting off and growing up with him, my, our family moving from place to place. I kind of had a built-in best friend. Obviously with an older brother, uh, you're going to be held to the same standards as them. Uh, and luckily I had a brother that uh, had a very um, motivating personality, um, competitive personality. So for me and him, it was a constant battle to see who would win. Uh, AJ went uh, to play football at Salisbury University up in Maryland. Um, he had been complaining about back issues. I mean, me and my brother grew up pretty tough. When my mom would ask us if anything was ever wrong with us, we'd always be like, yeah, we're fine, we're fine, even though something might be hurt or broken or whatever it might be. So um, when AJ finally kind of told my mom and dad, like, hey, like, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain. Uh, my parents could sense something was up, but they didn't think it'd be to the severity of what it was. Um, December 15th, we were supposed to go hang reeds at Arlington that Saturday, uh, and that was the game plan, getting up. So I woke up early, and my parents were just like, hey, change of plans. We're going to go ahead and take AJ to the local urgent care. He's just not feeling well. And I had gotten the call from my mom to meet my dad at the house. And uh, that was weird for me, uh, to be honest with you. I thought I was in trouble. I thought I like left the garage door open or something or left the door unlocked. And my dad had come home and was mad at me. So and I had gotten home, uh, my dad's kind of a little bit like out of it. And I was like, what's going on? He said, so some of the testing has shown that AJ's white count is up. And as soon as he said that, I was like, does he have cancer? My brother rode in the, in the ambulance and we followed them all the way down to UVA and that was the, the start of the next 14 months for my brother battling for the rest of his life. The goal ultimately was for AJ to receive a stem cell transplant. Um, he had acute myeloid leukemia, so AML. It's a very rare disease. It's like 0.0000% whatever, but he had it. And um, the, the goal was to get him the stem cell transplant from a, a close of, of a match that we can find for him. Um, and that was gonna be his cure ultimately for, for the cancer. So my brother's situation out there was um, he would have really, really tough days. And my mom told him, if you ever wanna quit, you have to call your brother. So he'd be frustrated. He'd say, I don't wanna do this anymore. He'd say, this is the end, I'm done. I'm tired of this, I can't do it anymore. And my mom would just constantly say like, okay, fine, pick up the phone. And he'd be like, I'm gonna do it, I wanna call him. He'd sit there and the blank stare on his face would just look at his phone and get mad at my mom and throw it back at her, fine. You know, we'll, we'll do another chemotherapy treatment, we'll do another, you know, we go to TPN, we'll do all these different situations that he's going through out there. And for me at home, um, I'm trying to find normalcy in the life that I'm living of, you know, not having my mom and dad around, uh, not having the brother that I've had by my side for 17 years at that point. Hey, you my man, you will soon. Love you, miss you, 
We're praying for you. Uh, we miss you. We love you. And uh, we want you to win this battle, and we're behind you 100%. I didn't know how many eyes were on me in our area. So, like, the first day that uh, people had kind of fit, found out that my brother was sick, uh, the amount of casseroles and lasagnas and pastas and things that had showed up on our doorstep. And it's just people trying to help in any way that they can, whether it was taking pressure off my mom, whether it was taking pressure off of me. Essentially, what they did for us is kind of the framework of what we try to do in our foundation for the community around us. So um, all the love and support we give you, anything you need, you're here. It's the AJ Slide family. Love you, bud. Which you might not know about me is I'm also a cancer survivor. Three years in June, buddy. So, you gotta stay positive. Be strong, man. Keep up the good fight. We'll see you when you get back, man. Got my bracelet on. They won't let me wear my t-shirt, but I got my bracelet on. Thick one is the AJ Slide hype one. We had uh, the AJ, the Sly Strong night that we had um, at one of the basketball games. AJ Sly so AJ's uh, intensity was very much uh, prevalent when he was playing, and uh, that just transformed into AJ Sly hype. It's our foundation logo, but it also is uh, the probably most memorable picture of my brother. That picture's from him clapping when he's coming off the field when we played Phoebus for the state semifinal game, and that was his last football game. That was the the last time I was able to play with him, and that's actually the, the tattoo on my right my right arm is a. Uh, the last time we were able to take the field together. And that's uh, through all the sports that we played throughout our life, that was the last time that we got to play together. And so it's a very just meaningful game. The, the amount of uh, stories we have from that game and the amount of stories that we have from playing sports our whole life, uh, that tattoo on my arm just kind of encompasses all that. The transplant was about 99% successful. So 100 days post-op, they came to him and just said, technically you're cured um, based off of our percentages. But the doctor was like, I don't, I don't trust where we're at right now. Like, I'm not gonna feel confident until that number is 100%. And so we were happy that where we were at, but we were still, you know, understanding that there might be a fight ahead. And um, there was, uh, after that, a couple weeks later, he had gotten to about 95, then 90, 70, and that percentage just kept going down and down and down. And we had gotten him kind of okay at the end of 2013 to be able to come home. And my mom was able to come home for my senior night. Um, AJ was able to come home for our, my senior banquet and uh, be there just for a couple of days and see some old friends from the area. And um, I didn't realize at that time that that would be the last time he was gonna be able to come home. For me, I never felt like my brother was sick. I mean, I knew he was battling and I knew that this was something that was scary and tough, but I never really thought that he was fighting cancer. I just felt like he was fighting something that he could beat. And it's pretty crazy when they come in with like a hazmat suit and they're telling you to sign this paperwork to say, we're gonna put this in your body and hopefully it's gonna help you. And my brother has to sign away and officially just kind of say like, hey, like this may kill me, but it might help. So on the 26th, is the day he signed that paperwork. And um, that was the first day that I, I had kind of realized that this wasn't gonna, like he wasn't gonna be be there anymore. And so um, for 14 months he fought, but for, for one day, it was the only day that I realized that he wasn't gonna be there. And luckily we were able to get a flight the next day out there and um, we got in just in time to, to see him before he had kind of gotten into the, a state where he wasn't really there anymore and able to spend the last uh, couple hours with him uh, before he had passed away, so. I went from having an older brother to being an only child. Uh, my parents went from having two kids to one. Um, so that whole first year was just trying to kind of get our feet back under us after getting knocked down. And once we started the foundation, it was really a way for us to, like I said, continue my brother's legacy in any way that we could. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be biased when I say it, but my brother was gonna do something good with his life. And we were blessed with our community in Stafford that they helped us as much as they could. 
And uh, we just want to both say thank you to them and for all that they did, as well as uh, kind of extend that outreach to as many people as we can. So. My name is Megan Davis, and I'm an associate director at Children's National. Children's National is a local hospital that serves the Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and beyond, and serves to help kids grow up stronger. I think it's a great opportunity for uh, our family to continue this kind of uh, symbiotic relationship of continually, you know, trying to help uh, Children's Hospital as much as we can um, through the different avenues that we might do. So, like again, you said the book drive, we we donate to them um, every single year, uh, either or we do some iPads, things like that. It's cool that we, a lot of times when we donate, we put the Slide Strong sticker on it. So sometimes when you're at the hospital, if you ever look at the back of it, you might see the the foundation logo on it and. And so for us uh, to pair to, together on this My Cause, My Cleats, it's just to continue this awareness behind the fact that there are people that are truly fighting a fight that they shouldn't be fighting and they need as much help as they can get. Children's National is a proud pediatric partner of the Commanders. And this year we were really honored to be able to have one of our patients work with Joey Sly for the My Cause, My Cleats initiative. Sophia is an amazing young woman. Uh, she is treated at Children's National for a complex care issue. And she is in the hospital, but you would never know because she doesn't let anything get her down. She's always smiling and drawing hearts and she's just incredible. And for the My Cause, My Cleats initiative, uh, we chose Sophia because she's a fantastic artist and we asked her to um, do some drawings that could be included on Joey Sly's shoe. And she came up with a amazing football um, that represents her and all the patients at Children's National on the cleat. Um, they've picked her for a bunch of different things and, and luckily we got to be picked with her to, to design the cleats for this year. Uh, she's a avid artist and also a model, as I can tell from the, the flyers that they sent out. So I'm really excited that she gets to experience something like this because I, I think she'll love it. This opportunity means the world to Sophia and her family. They're huge Commanders fans for one, but also when you're a kid that, you know, you're always in and out of the hospital, times like this mean a lot. Hi, Sophia. Nice to meet you. I'm Joey. I'm Sophia. Ready to look at these cleats? Yeah. So what was your thought process behind making these? Do you have any thoughts in mind on what you wanted to draw on here? Um, I wanted to do something that represents most of you. So I pulled up some references of, you know, like uh, the ball and stuff. Okay. And I just made it more f on the fun side. All right, so you ready for them? That's yeah. awesome. So this is my foundation logo. And then here is the ones that we've been waiting for. Oh. Look at these. Those are awesome. Wanna hold it? So tell me what you, what you think about them. Those look amazing. So I did two. So the first one I was doing more colors on. Okay. And I wanted to do one that was more of a color of a normal ball. Which one's your favorite of these two? Um, this one. That one? I kind of like all the ones you did on this one and all the colors on it. That's awesome. We should look to see if we can get one of those in the football game, huh? And imagine me kicking one of those. That'd be kind of funny. So it's got some, some different hearts all over the football. You see, she made one look like an actual NFL football. I think like we, like we said, we need to put some of these into the game. This one's got all the different colors on it. And then, like I said, this is, uh, so this is my older brother. I don't know if you knew. My older brother's name was AJ. And we have a foundation in honor of him. And what we try to do is um, just help families and stuff like that that are going through cancer, or, um, just battling through difficult situations. So we have a foundation set up in my brother's honor. So um, he would probably have loved to have seen the design from this. 